But what would be the um, uh, the guys that come into the club? What would be the biggest difference that you notice in the first year uh, in the way that they're eating when it comes to breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Is there one that they're generally doing okay, and then there's another area that perhaps you can make the biggest progress with? In the preparation for the preseason, well, we've really got to focus on our development players, uh, the Suns at the moment, and so. You know, when you get in those guys with young talent, you know, they've got those physical attributes, but they're still not quite uh, um, maybe robust enough to compete with the big guys at the highest level. So it's a real priority to make sure that they're making gains in lean mass as fast as possible. Um, you know, a lot of guys will hit the gym and it can take years to, to gain lean mass and see results. Um, but, you know, if we can optimise everything and, and really get the nutrition dialed, uh, we can significantly cut down the time that it takes to develop the body um, to go basically from from a boy's body to a man's body. Um, so you can compete with the big boys uh, and play um, yeah, at the highest level. From a practical point of view, what will be some things on that topic, I guess, for the young guys that are uh, skinny and guys and girls that are looking to put on some muscle mass to help their upcoming season, help with their contest game and so forth? Uh, what will be, how would they be able to gain information from the masterclass to help with that? Yes. So, you know, we can look at theory and numbers and, you know, grams of macronutrients and, and all those targets. Um, but at the end of the day, we've got to eat food, right? Uh, you know, it can be a pain in the ass to actually have to um, prepare food or source food or think about what you're going to eat. Um, but unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to do. So, um, you know, what what I want to make is, this masterclass be really practical mm -hmm. and show you exactly um, the preparation techniques, um, the equipment that you're going to need, shopping lists, the types of foods that you're going to prepare for yourself um, that are going to make you deliver on that the theory that we're going to talk about, the grams of protein, the macronutrient targets, the calories. Um, yep. So how are we going to put that into action? What are some sort of common mistakes? Uh, particularly those living in Perth and in Queensland, the hotter sort of climates, uh, how important is hydration? Yeah, you know, like um, other than running out of fuel and not being fit enough, the other, the main thing that contributes to fatigue uh, in training on the field is dehydration. So, and you know what, it obviously is more um, pertinent in hotter climates, but with the amount of work that we're doing in an AFL game and the intensity that it's played at, um, the sweat rates can be quite high, even in cold climates. Um, and so it's important that you're across your hydration and that you're managing that appropriately. Um, you know, we, we generate heat from exercise, um, just metabolic heat and as a part of the byproduct of burning energy. Um, and, you know, that metabolic heat needs to be dispersed into the environment. Otherwise, the body's going to pull back um, and reduce the amount of work we, we can do. And so sweating and evaporation is a primary method that we um, lose that heat energy to the environment. How important is it to ensure you're getting electrolytes? Yeah. So, you know, when we speak about electrolytes, main electrolytes, um, sodium. And sodium is abundant in the food that we eat. So in terms of taking additional electrolytes, generally um, we just want to drink water with food. Um, food also contains potassium and magnesium, which are our other main electrolytes. And so there's no real need under normal circumstances to take additional electrolytes above what you're already eating in food. So drinking water with food is um, definitely sufficient. Uh, and the other thing is just so during a game, uh, do we need to replace electrolytes? So the thing is we lose water in sweat and, you know, sweat's salty and the skin's salty. So it seems like you're losing salt. But in actual fact, your body um, conserves that salt. So um, it's regulated at the kidneys and it's also um, conserved in the sweat gland. So you actually lose more water than salt when you sweat. What's the best way to prepare for a 2K time trial? Um, clearly from a nutrition perspective, yeah. Yeah, so obviously you want to be well rested <laughs> for at least a day or two coming into it. And then as part of that, that pre-24 hour period, even though it's not an endurance event per se, I would um, carb up, probably not as aggressively as for a game, maybe in that sort of five to seven gram per kilo over the 24 hours. So we're going to be making carb focused um, choices in that day leading up to it. 
day of, I know you, we usually do it quite early in the morning. Um, however, I wouldn't rock up to that not having eaten anything. You want to get some sort of pre-fuel on board and it needs to obviously be something that you can um, be well tolerated and it needs to be digested before you start because you don't want that um, sitting in your stomach contents when you're absolutely wringing it out on the track. Yeah. 